Hello, Akash. Uh, good morning, Lucina. Hello, Victor. Good morning. Hello, Oliver. Hello, hello. Um, let's wait just uh, one minute more and we're going to start. In the meantime, um, can you put your name in the minutes notes? Okay, um, well, um, welcome for another um, weekly meeting for the uh, CNF uh, working group. Um, today, uh, it seems like we don't have too much items in the agenda, so I'm going to just review what we have it. So the first one is like, as you already know, like we have a couple of events coming. Um, the first one is uh, obviously the KubeCon, and we have a co-located event uh, one day before KubeCon. Uh, so, and, and the rest is just like, uh, it's also really like with KubeCon and the, the, the sessions that we are going to have after that uh, in Seattle, there is like one summit. Uh, it's like two weeks after the KubeCon, so it's pretty close and and in the same place, uh, during the same time, it's going to be the LFM developer and this, this, uh, this forum. So if you have the opportunity, it's uh, a nice place to, to do networking and catch all the trends and, and interesting things that all the colleagues are doing. Um, so I don't know, Lucina, do you want to mention something about the next KubeCon or like any Anything uh, that I is right with those things, or like, uh, or is anything that I have missed in the next 
upcoming event that you want to highlight? Let's see. Oh, if there's any talks that anyone's interested in at the KubeCon in Detroit or One Summit in Seattle, feel free to note those. At Cloud Native Telco Day, I'll be giving a quick lightning talk on a CNF certification, and we'll also be giving a lightning talk about CNF Cloud Native best practices and certification at One Summit, and we'll be attending the developer testing forum as well where we may have a another session about certification. And then for KubeCon EU, that'll be in Amsterdam in April. And CFPs are open for another month. And if anyone is interested in sharing with their companies the sponsorship form, um, there's an, an interest form available, a Google form. And then they'll share the actual prospectus for KubeCon Europe and any telco days this winter after KubeCon. And regarding the Cloud Native Telco Day, uh, the schedule has been published, right? Remember. What, um, can you repeat your question, please? Yeah, uh, I was just asking about the, the cloud native telco day. Uh, the, regarding the schedule, the schedule has been published uh, someplace or like, I, I think that I saw Jeff uh, sharing like the schedule of the topics that is going to be presented during the cloud native telco day in, in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I linked to the schedule up above. Okay, it's this one, right? It's oh. a half day event. It'll be in person only. So if we want to have a live stream component for Europe, uh, please share that sponsorship perspective so that we can have a sponsor for the live stream next. Nice. Thank you. All right. Any question regarding those events or any particular comments? Okay, well, let's move forward with the next, uh, just let's review the PRs. Uh, if you also have any new PR, which is, uh, I don't know if that's good news or bad news, but um, please feel free to add new things or propose new changes if you discover something. Um, I think the issues have been pretty much the same. Um, Last last week, uh, Tom was reviewing them, so I don't expect too much changes on that. Um, yeah, we still have anything new on these um, issues. Probably the only the only thing that we have uh, something I haven't proposed is. Um, is just practice. I don't know if that is a best practice, but I will start uh, the discussion about this particular topic. Uh, so basically what I'm proposing is um, to support multiple annotations for different uh, CNIs uh, or CNI multiplexers, uh, those CNIs which provide uh, multiple network interfaces per pod. So my proposal is uh, to have all of them defined in the annotations, and in that way, maybe we can provide better portability and support many platforms, things like that. Uh, it is an initial draft where I expect like having a kind of discussion, like uh, reviewing those things. Uh, I have provided the link. So you feel like uh, it would be a good idea where like community can be beneficial of this particular topic or like if you consider like it's not a good idea and also <laughs> if, if you think that uh, it, it, there would be a, another best way to define 
this, I guess this is, is the place to start the discussion. Um, oh, I noticed that Taylor joined the conversation. Hi, Taylor. So, yeah, basically this is the, the initial state of this uh, proposal. Uh, it's not too much, um, but at least I, I expect to, to, to have that initial conversation where uh, we can, I, I noticed that uh, Ian has been starting putting some ideas in the Slack channel. That's great. Uh, so. Um, I don't know, do, do we have something else uh, Taylor, to, to discuss besides um, particular things in the agenda? Like, I've just checked the PRs, we don't have PRs. Uh, each is pretty are the same. Oh, well, we haven't had any particular change on that and have just started talking about the, 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 the draft that I have created like last week. Uh, yeah. Is there a either an issue or a GitHub discussion for the multi network? Should we define as annotations? Well, we have this, uh, which was created by Daniel um, mm -hmm. a couple of months ago. Yeah. Uh, right. And in that, we have uh, kind of a GitHub discussion where um, Alok, I guess is his name. Um, Mm -hmm. He he started the initial uh, conversation of this. Um, in this time, he makes a few things about um, supporting multiple protocols uh, or like using. In this case, he was expressing the usage of uh, Multus and also uh, the requirement that Multus has, which is uh, predefined the networks. So let's see, he was combined those. Two topics: uh, reprovisioning and, and the usage of multos. We, I don't think that we concluding something uh, particular. Like uh, there was a lot of good things to discuss here. That's why uh, Daniel Kerr like this kind of new issue, which is some right, some like related with the, the discussion, but it's not directly related. So, and yeah, definitely the, the, the best practice is just my proposal, something I have uh, that I work in, uh, in in the past. Uh, so I did some experiments uh, where I conclude basically uh, what I'm proposing, like, uh, say like, for example, in this case, I have um, a CNF that I tried to define with multiple annotations. In this case, I was trying to support like Motus, Abandon, and MSM at the same time. So uh, uh, that, that was the way to provide that portability. So I just wanted to put it like a, in a proposal you know, for somewhere like uh, when someone can review it and maybe uh, or like the conversation or like uh, concluding something like we don't have to do this. Maybe it's not a best practice. It's like anti pattern or something like that. Um, but but the point is like uh, multiple interfaces in, in CNF is something that it is uh, desirable uh, or like people are looking ways to mitigate this particular issue or limitation in Kubernetes. And it would be nice to to have a solution or like uh, something that to recommend to others to work on this. So Ian was um, asking the question: Is this trying to codify what people are currently doing? Or are we trying to communicate? Um, suggest an idea to improve the state of the art. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's pretty hard to find um, at least a, 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 an open source 
CNF uh, samples or real examples. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we have a couple, but like, uh, but most of them, or they're very complex. For example, I know that Magma has implemented something, but it's pretty hard to adjust all what they have been doing. Uh, or in ONA, they have a couple of them, but it is just uh, very dumb examples where like, I don't think that adds too much value to, 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 to any, any real example. Um, so what I have seen is like, they just pick one solution. They, for example, just pick Motos, which is uh, the, the most common solution and, and they try to design their own TNF in Motos. Uh, I don't know if this is a good approach uh, or, or, or we have to be open to more, more alternatives. But yeah, the point that uh, Ian is making is, is very good. Uh, that that sounds like we, we should be aware of what the others are doing, and based on that, we have to post something or like. Oh. <laughs> I this seems related to also not statically setting network information and code like not putting ip addresses directly in code would be uh, related to this not specifying your network interfaces in your code instead you're dynamically allocating and binding to the interfaces based on what's available so that all sounds good i'm just trying to see where it fits together and the example that you're showing would be one implementation, but the, the best practice doesn't specify exactly how you're doing this, I guess, which is fine. Yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe we can break it down in, in two best practices, like, I mean, the first one is maybe, uh, as you say, like pointing just to not specify any any particular uh, network details, like just limit and limit the, the definition to the name of, and that's it. Uh, which is in this case, I guess. The only thing is like. Uh, what this pod is doing is basically just specifying which networks are going to be connected, but it, it is not specifying the IP address or you know, maybe the, I think that maybe in SM it's a little bit more picky, which I have to provide a little bit more details, but probably we can reach that community and say, well, maybe what, what can we do for reducing the amount of information? And in Motus, yeah, you have to provide both. Like you have to to provide the the name of the name of the interface, but you don't. You're not saying anything related with the IP address or the the subnet that you're using. So this is a little more specific. You have to say, well, this network is going to be attached to this interface. Uh, with Danon, is just the name. And with NSM, is uh, is given his nature uh, is you have to consider if you are consuming the endpoint or if you are uh, offering an endpoint. So, which uh, depend on the case, uh, you have to define the things differently. Uh, but but I guess like a rich certain level of um, abstraction. Uh, and this is not the standard way that they are uh, saying it because they have like a, um, they need to, an init containers and those init containers have to uh, specify all this information. So so they haven't provided 
that level of abstraction. I just reached that level of abstraction in FM because I create multiple uh, artifacts. But but my point was, uh, you you can reach that uh, level of abstraction if once you have all these things, uh, it's easier to to get a, a similar thing and and offer um, this uh, network definition in the in annotations. But yeah, as, as Ian saying, is is this the the right way to do it? I don't know. Your example was also, uh, you were limited in trying to implement this based on the software that you were working with, which is emulating um, a bucket core. The, yeah, and the specific interfaces are required for the application work. And they're, they're also, I think, relevant as far as what we're talking about in the group. because we're in, trying to integrate Kubernetes with external like 5G protocols. Anyways, uh, does anyone else have some feedback for Victor? And also another thing that I noticed, um, Taylor, is uh, regarding the order because most of the CNS that I have in, in, in in yeah in, around is uh they have they provide like a manual steps to the point things for example they consider like once a particular container is deployed they keep it and they are not considered like that case where like you try to deploy all of them and eventually you, you know reaching that ready state so that's why I have created like this other script. Like, I mean, usually this is what we can expect in in in, in places like Kubernetes. You 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 don't have a particular order. Some of the uh, containers are going to start before um, others, and and that eventual uh, readiness is something that. Is also important to consider is, is I don't know if that's something that we have to also put like another best practice or another point to discuss. But yeah, it's, it's, it's important to highlight that the order is not something that we can control and and eventually we can um, expect some failures. Like if one of the dependencies is, is working at the beginning, but eventually that pod or container is, 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 is failing so and and the next time that it is this uh, running again and retreats another ip address what can we do with the rest of the the dependencies so we should modify the the point but they are connecting or like because yeah probably they are expecting the point or to send the, com the communication through the last IP address, but between a new IP address can bring some problems or points to consider. Some of that will be covered with existing tests that are happening, the, at least on the CNF certification around the resiliency and other things where Something comes up, uh, goes down, a component goes down, but writing up a best practice related to that would probably be a good idea. So it's decoupling those parts. You were talking about how the timing, not, not having dependency on another component. Um, I'm saying component, but I guess if it's, if you're building something in microservices, then those microservices shouldn't depend on the exact order to get up to at least the readiness um, checks. They should be able to get to some stage. Now, internally, they may. 
Yeah, but not only during the day zero, also uh, day one and two as well, right? Like, uh, let's say that everything is up and running and it's working fine, but eventually one of those components are, are down. So how, how that CNF has to behave? Like, uh, so need to redeploy everything or like just modify the configuration to point to a new uh, component, as you said. For the example that you you're working on with this this GW tester, um, this is related to the. Um, mobile core components and they're expecting at least like the session manager or something to always be available you look at like the yeah and this is only showing a, a couple of the components but of course there's a whole lot more here mm -hmm. including um, yeah and also so, so the the right now it's dependent on specific address and stuff once it comes up always to be available so it would think if if one of them goes down then at least the session manager is always available to go back and talk to to get the ip address for the other components and connecting via that specific address even if it was dynamic at when it was bootstrapped into the system i don't think would be cloud native for this uh, after day one it it's ideally still able to connect and look up using kubernetes services so if if it goes if one of the components goes down then it should come up and it's using um a service that's going to be communicated by kubernetes here's the new address versus whatever it had hard coded and i'm I'm not saying like the whole machine goes away but maybe it reboots so now your gateway rebooted and it's coming back up well how does it find the mma maybe the mma actually moved to a a new system and has a new address completely well it should be able to Mm -hmm. find that yeah. dynamic, dynamically every time yeah for for example in that case like if mme is, is rebooted or it is assigned a new ip address all the dependencies for example enod or sgw has to also or well, it is it, two possibilities like a possibility is is just recreate a new one with a new ip address which is going to um, disencadenate uh, another uh, or trigger another uh, rebooting the other dependencies, or they just have to modify the IP address and point to a new the new IP address assigned to an M M MME component. So, so yeah, basically, I, I tried. Do this example just like uh, try to experiment with uh, something a little more complex uh, in, in terms like or more realistic. It's not pretend to be uh, very functional. Uh, uh, I try to exercise most of the my my learnings in, in, in all these technologies, and I just discovered like that good case where I can summarize all the network definition all in the annotations and obviously when i started doing all these things i discovered other use cases and scenarios that i had to cover um, and, and i don't pretend like to use this in production definitely it's not a, uh, my purpose but i just try to uh, you know reach those limits and try to uh, find places to improve
Does anyone else have feedback? Not right now, but I would do want to have a look at it in, in a bit more detail. Thanks, Tom. Is the Google Doc um, in comment mode for anyone that gets access to that link? I think that anyone can read it, but I'm not sure if anyone can modify it. Uh, can they leave comments? Let's, let's do a quick experiment, I guess. Uh, yeah, let me see. Nope. Okay. So you can add you here. If you make it where it's um, comment accessible, well, yeah, anybody with link could comment. And we can change it if you end up with a ton of spam, but probably okay dropping this for sure in the GitHub discussions, but probably in the GitHub issue. Okay. Can always modify it. At least have it in the Google Doc and the GitHub issue so that we can, uh, at the other Google Doc, the Santa Fort group. Yeah, and also if you think that it should be there, like to reduce the steps before before this one, like, um, I don't know, the network definition, uh, how can we define all these things before proposing having all these uh, annotations, uh, like, I, I don't know, like breaking down this particular uh, best practice in, in other two or like three. Uh, yeah, it's also an a possibility as well. Sure. All right. Um, I think that that was the last last topic in the agenda. Um, so anyone else has something to share, uh, comment or? Okay. Uh, Hearing none, I don't know. Ping, uh, Ping Xing, I, th I think you had, you had a comment about XGVilla is a new release, Ping Xing. We forgot to reschedule the telecom user group. Um, so I, I went over there just before the call. He was over on that call. Uh, from China Mobile. Maybe it's not there. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. May drop a link in there for the new release and get some info on XG Vela release. Like to see some of the stuff that they're doing. I mean, the multi interface. Um, Multi-network stuff was it when I was looking at the XG Vela a while back. I, I mean, it was part of the discussion, so I'm sure they've looked into that as well. All right. Well, I don't have anything else. Anybody else? No, thank you. Okay, well, thanks again and see you next week.
All right. See y'all next week. Thanks, folks. Bye.